Hey guys, it's Drac, and I'm doing the highly anticipated mod guide for the Slingfire. The blaster is really, really fun to play with, and this handle and gearbox down here poses an interesting modification quandary, but I feel like we can squeeze a few meters extra out of it, and without any further talking about it, all the screws are on this side, so we're just going to have at it. Hey guys, so after kind of derping out and spending 10 minutes trying to open the shell after loosening all of the screws, I discovered that this is the major screw here. It is a large, widely threaded screw, and it slides off. The stock is all its own piece. It does nothing else. And then you come in and you remove the one hidden screw. And from here, it should be more or less pretty simple to open up the blaster because I had it mostly pried apart before that. So let's see what our internals look like. Exciting. This is why I usually do it first because some of the screws after you loosen them have a tendency to kind of fit back into their screw ports and hold things together. Let's see if we can't get it apart now. Something's still holding. Hmm. Very strange. Hey guys, so right off the bat, the gearbox looks to be isolated, which is very nice. And then the gearbox connects to a gear train to prime via this bolt sled. And they look to be two separate pieces of plastic. Hopefully they're not solvent welded together, but that's really good. Definitely using new style Elite internals. This is a direct plunger blaster with no air release hole. One thing that I want to point out is that I'm very pleased that gone are the days of springs in our tactical rail attachment and I think that that's really nice that now it just works on the torsion of this kind of plastic piece. It takes up slightly more space. It's much wider now but I think that it's very very nice that now we don't have to worry about tiny springs flying away. So all in all I think that the blaster is sweet. It looks almost exactly as I expected out of the performance that I was experiencing. So I do want to kind of walk through the internals once with the blaster open so you can see that we're ratcheting through and we catch here, then pulling this trigger is going to push the catch back down, but you can't do that until you're all the way forward, which is good, and then obviously pulling this will fire. The spring isn't at full compression, which is interesting. That's definitely a point that we can mod this blaster to give it a little bit more oomph, and we can remove this air restrictor. So I'll show you what that looks like as I pull these pieces out. So, at this point, I have already come through with my super long drill bit and drilled out the AR without having to remove this bolt sled, which is very, very helpful. I also want to point out that it looks like this catch is clipped in here. It's kind of folded in and then stuck. You can't pull it out, which is okay because the catch spring is very, very strong. It's very tough. But in the event that we get a new gearbox and we have reinforced parts and a stronger lever and we need a tougher catch, I think that it's going to be important to come in here and snip this so that it'll actually lift out. The shell, despite looking like it's two separate pieces, seems to be glued together in a lot of places, at least on my model, and I believe I have a Gen 1 model. Also, for those of you that don't know what this tool is, this is a rotary pipe cutter, and it is just awesome. Instead of having to use your Dremel, you just tighten it a little bit, turn it, tighten it a little bit, turn it, tighten it, turn it, and eventually you get a perfectly cut disc which is just awesome. So this is about a centimeter and a half of one point or of half inch CPVC. And I'm going to try using it as a spacer because it's just the right size for this plunger rod.
So this is going to be my final shot before I come in and put the blaster back together. It's worth noting that this priming rod doesn't fit through regular half inch CPVC, so you have to come in and ream out the inside of the CPVC, and you're looking for just enough lip that this increases your spring compression to right about here. 1.5 centimeters is a good starting point, then you're going to have to sand it down. This is as much CPVC as I could fit in and still get full compression out of my spring. But once you've done that, your spring will be more compressed. This is the equivalent of putting coins in Mavericks for those of you that have been following me forever. And once you've done that and you've knocked out your air restrictor, I think that you should be getting slightly improved performance and I'm looking forward to seeing kind of what the effect on the sling fire is. Alright guys, so here's the conclusion to the sling fire mod guide. It's slightly harder to prime now, but it's not that bad and I don't feel like I'm putting too much wear on my lever or my gears, but full compression is definitely a little more tricky. I'm getting, I want to say slightly better performance. I've done a quick range test, but I feel like I'm only getting, like I said, about five more meters out of the blaster. Not five meters, five American feet out of the blaster, like five to ten. So it's a slight power boost. It's definitely worth doing. I'm just not entirely sure if it's worth the effort if you're not going to be like playing HVZ with this. I think that it's a fun mod and it was really easy if you have all of the necessary tools, but it's probably not worth going out of your way because there's nothing too extreme you can do with this gearbox where it is. Hopefully a company like Orange Modworks or um, Explorer will come out with replacement gears or replacement lever and like a much more powerful spring and then we can just drop new parts in and go to town. All in all, I think that the Sling Fire is an awesome blaster. If you haven't seen my review of its stock, be sure to check that out in the description box below because it's it's just a blast. I even do some John Wayne priming in my review. It's, it's just a ton of fun. Alright, as always guys, thanks for watching.